Over four and a half years ago, Zoro was released into the game, and since then, it has always been a point of controversy and discussion, but one thing has always remained the same. It's a fantastic money maker for mid-levels and high-level players. It's also a really good pet hunt as well. But this boss even to this day still gives some players trouble when it comes to learning its mechanics as well as how to properly kill it. So, in this video, we will be going through Zora and discussing its stats, abilities, strategies, tips and tricks, and potential loots. I hope you find this video useful, and if you did, please remember to give it a like and subscribe for future content from the channel. So what is Zora? Zora is a level 725 boss located in the swamps of Zalandra, south of Port Tiris. The boss can only be killed through the use of ranger magic. Fun fact though, you can actually reach it with a halberd, but the boss is actually immune to melee, so the hits will actually not do anything. Uh, the boss has 500 HP and has a max hit of 41. It always seems to hit 41, so I think it just either misses or hits 41s. And has the ability to venom you. Venom works differently than poison. With poison, the damage will slowly reduce over time if it has not been inflicted again or healed. With venom though, it's quite the opposite. The damage will start at 6 damage every 18 seconds, then increase by 2 each time it hits, capping off at 20 damage. So they basically act opposite of each other. This is something that needs to be healed off when fighting Zora, which I will discuss shortly. I just wanted to explain how the venom works. If you die at this boss, you can reclaim your items by talking to the priestess Zul Gwen Winning Shurjagex, who is right next to the boat that takes you to Zora at no cost. If you die somewhere unsafe a second time though, before you retrieve your items, all items from the first death are gone forever. So the only real requirement is that you need to have regicide completed up to the point where you unlock Port Tiris. But you can't use a lot of the transportation methods to get to Zora without completing Regicide, so just complete it. It's going to save you a lot of time in uh, travel. This also means that you have to complete Plague City, Biohazard, and the Underground Pass. Something else that is not mentioned often by like most other guides or most other people that talk about Zora, um, in order to actually kill Zora, you have to talk to High Priestess Zoharkinga? Sure. Um, before you can sacrifice yourself to the boss, that's not a pun, that's literally what you are. You are a sacrifice to this boss. She is located to the west of the docks. She's sitting on a little tree stump. Requirements for this guide will be 75 range, 75 magic, 60 prayer, and 60 defense. Recommended levels, as in levels that you want to have before like camping the boss, will be 85 mage, 85 range, 77 prayer for rigor and augury at some point whenever you get the money to unlock those, 70 defense, and 71 agility to boost to 76 for the agility shortcut to the west. So for our beginner gear setup, uh, getting your first kill, I'm going to discuss two different like setups you can use. You can do a normal method or the mage only method. And the difference between these is that with the normal method, uh, you can DPS every phase obviously, but with the mage, you can only DPS certain phases that are weak to magic. Um, this will make it take much less damage over time and it's much slower. So it's generally considered to be much safer because you are protected during the phases that can actually like hurt you. Um, but it's definitely not as fast as the normal setup. Our gear setups are going to look something like this, though. For the normal method, we'll use a Blessed Coif, Avis Accumulator, Glory, God Blessing, Trident of the Seas. Um, heavily recommend upgrading this to a Trident of the Swamp if you can. The plus three max hit is definitely worth it, so if you can, please upgrade to a Trident of the Swamp. Aram's Top and Bottom, Book of Darkness, Barrow's Gloves, Dehyde Boots, and a ring of recoil. Your inventory will look something like this. You will have a Carol's top and bottom, a toxic blowpipe, an anti-venom plus, bastion potion, magic potion, some quick teleportation method, two prayer potions, an angler fish, three carom wands, and the rush sharks or manta rays. Um, it's also worth mentioning you can wear a serp helm with this. Um, serp helm does give you immunity to venom and poison, but you do get negative offensive um, stats when it comes to range and magic. So usually it's better for you to just use an anti-venom and then get higher DPS with a better helmet, but that's completely up to you. It's also much cheaper to do it that way. Again, up to you, but I want to throw it in there. Um, with this setup, we are trying to minimize the amount of switches we have to do in order to focus more on the mechanics of the boss. If you want to add more switches for better DPS, prioritize things such as the Tormented Bracelet, the Occult Necklace, and God Cape or Imbued God Cape in that order. Also for the reason that we're using Carols over God Dehyde is that we want the better defensive bonuses that Carols presents us over Dehyde because we are learning we're probably going to take hits when we're not supposed to, so having the better defensive bonuses will help mitigate some of that damage. 
For the main joining method, you will use the same setup as you did with the normal setup, but instead you won't have any switches in your inventory and can instead bring some food. Um, you can also replace the boots with mystic boots and the, the helmet with like an Aram's hood if you want or a mystic hat, um, but again, it's not like super big. For those of you looking for the best in slot setup, it's going to look like this. Ancestral hat, imbued god cape, occult, dragon arrows, bat blaster, ancestral top, arcane spirit shield, ancestral bottoms, tormented bracelet, eternals, and a ring of suffering imbued. The ring of suffering, once imbued, has plus 20 in all defensive bonuses as well as plus 4 prayer bonus. But the main reason for this is that I can hold recoil charges in it, which makes it perfect for this boss. So we're not only limited to 40 in our ring slot, we can have, you know, 400,000 if we wanted to. I just wanted to show this for anybody who is coming to this guide for a more high level approach to Zora. Most of this guide is going to be focused on like beginner guides and like trying to get your first kill. Um, but for sakes, for completion of sakes, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there as well, as well as the inventory. Um, the inventory that we're going to be using here is Elite Void Range. That's only if your blowpipe has adamant or rune darts in it. If it has dragon darts, then you're going to want to use Armadale instead. Um, Avis Assembler, Anguish, Twisted Bow, Toxic Blowpipe, Pegasians, Antivenom Plus, Bastion, Divine Ranging Potion, Imbued Heart, Three Prayer Potions, Venge Runes in a Runge Pouch, Solandra Teleports, House Teleports, or Ring of Dueling, Two Carambwants, an Angler, and the rest Sharks and Manta Rays. I'll go into more detail with this later. There's a lot of like fine, fine like details and nuances with it, but that's the best in slot setup for you. And for the AFK quote unquote Tebow method uh your setup will look like this you'll have an armadale helmet an assembler a necklace or a necklace of anguish dragon arrows Tebow, armor top and bottom barrows gloves pegations and a ring of suffering imbued the inventory will have the blowpipe Antum Venom Plus, Divine Ranging Potion, Bastion Potion, Angler, three Super Restores, Solandra Teleports, Teleport to House, Rune Pouch with Venge Runes, and Manta Rays. So how do we get to Zora? Uh, there's a plethora of ways to get here, but the three most common are going to be as follows, from best to worst. Zolantra Teleport, it's super quick, super expensive, only use these if you can average like three kills per trip, personally. Maybe even two kills per trip you can probably get away with it, since they drop in sets of four now. But I would still only do this if you can maintain three kills per trip on average. You can use the Fairy Ring Code, BJS, haha, <laughs> very funny. And 76 agility, this is boostable, so you can boost it from 71. Um, this teleports you to an island to the off the coast to the west of Zora that you can jump across the rocks and then run over to Zora. And then third, you have the charter ship to Port Tiras and then run to the southeast. This is by far the slowest method to get here, but hey, you work with what you got. I did this for a while when it first came out and got like my first like 100 or so KC off of it. It works just slow. So for strategies, first off, I am not going to advise anybody to use a Zora helper as Jagex has already stated that they do not want the devs of Runelite to have this plugin in their client, so I'm not going to advise anybody to do that. Insert copyright free crap rave here. So Zora follows a strict set of rotations for every fight. Each single time you fight Zora, the fight will be one of these four rotations. My advice to you and the, what I did is that you pick one or two of these phases and try to learn those at first. I will show you where you can log out to reset the fight so you can get the rotation you want every time when we start doing kills. Something else about this boss is that he has, or it, I'm not sure, you know, whatever, um, has three distinguishable forms, green, red, and blue, and all three have different stats. Green is the most common, the one you'll see most of the time, and for this form, you will want to pray range and use magic attacks. For the red phase, Zora will attack you with melee, and if you are hit, you will be stunned for a short period of time. We can manipulate the hitbox of this so that we never get hit, so no overhead prayers are needed here. We will attack with magic here as well. Keep in mind, his defenses during red phase are stupidly high, so don't be discouraged if you never hit. Like, he has really high defenses in red phase. Um, and then we have blue phase, which anybody who's killed Zora will know it's just the blue range phase is all it is. Zora can either use magic or range attacks. It always seems to use range attacks, but you have to pray magic for some stupid reason. Pray mage during this phase and attack Zora with range attacks during the phase. You will want to watch your health very closely during this form because of the fact that Zora can shoot range attacks and can hit 41s and only hits 41s. And you can't pray against them because you're praying rain or you're praying magic. Focus on staying alive rather than DPSing the boss when trying to learn how to kill it. In the words of my friends, the wild card, just 
just just fucking eat just don't die just fucking eat aside from these three forms zora also has a couple specials and the first one is that zora can shoot out venom clouds which do low but rapid damage if you remain inside these clouds uh, this is what causes you to understand the positioning in the fight because you don't want to be standing in a spot where you can get hit by a venom cloud for any long period of time or this will really start draining your supplies. Secondly, Zora can also spawn little snakelings. These attack with either mage or melee and can be prayed against. So if you can and you can throw on protect from magic, it's going to help you negate some of the damage and they will despawn after a short period of time. This is why we bring a recoil to deal with these um, so we don't have to actually damage them. If the snakeling hits you, it will die because they have one HP. So the recoil is actually great against these. Thirdly, Zora also has a Jad phase, meaning that Zora will switch between attacking with range and magic attacks every hit. It happens at the same spot in the respective rotation, and I will make a point to note this when we are doing the walkthrough kills. So that's a lot of information about the boss, but we are going to go through this and break down all of these inside the walkthrough fights that I will be doing alongside you guys. One last thing I want to mention before we get into this is that here is a picture of Zora's lair. I have highlighted some tiles to stand on. These are the only tiles we are ever going to stand on, so I would highly recommend advising you to mark these via the use of rune light. Hold down shift and right click on the tile you want to mark, then click mark the tile to mark it. Um, also, I know I'm a max account, and unfortunately I don't have a lower level account to use for this, so I will instead be intentionally making the fight last longer than normal to show you guys the entire rotation as well as to what happens when the rotation reaches the end. Hopefully this helps, hopefully this gives a good point. Each fight will take around three minutes. So let's start with rotation one. All right, select before every run, angler, magic potion, and drink your bastion, and head on in. Hopefully we get the um, a correct rotation. So like every rotation, run over here to this corner, put on mystic might or augury, whichever one you have, and go to town. And just chill, pet your cat, Look on Facebook, look on Twitter, look on MySpace, whatever. Just hang out for a minute. Okay, what do we get? Okay, sweet. So we get like rotation one or two. We don't know which one it is. Chill here for the first attack. Then we're going to move up to this tile right here. Then after that, switch to your range because it's going to be a blue phase right now. From, from magic, put on eagle eye, drink your antivenom when he poisons you. Make your way up to this square here. And then book it over to this one, switch to magic, put on protect from range, put on mystic might, and attack him from this square right here. And you don't really have to worry about anything. This is a very long phase, so you can just chill. He's going to spawn snakelings, but they're fine because you have a recoil. You don't need to worry about them. After this, he's going to do a red phase in the middle, so we can turn off protect from range. Stay right here, because after this, there's a blue phase right here. So we'll just stay chilling right here. He will never hit us if we're standing here, so we'll just hang out. After that hit, put on your range gear. Protect from mage, eagle eye, and attack him from here. Uh, he'll do five attacks. It's still relevant, but it's just good to know. Then we're going to run over here. As we're running, put on your magic gear. Put on protect from range. Put on mystic might, and you're going to mage attack from right here. Uh, again, we're going to chill in this spot for a little bit because after this, there's going to be a blue phase right here and we will put on Protect from Mage and we'll range from here and stuff. So Protect from Mage, put on your range gear, put on Eagle Eye. I'm going to use my specials now. Just make sure I don't die. Once these poison clouds clear up, go ahead and make your way over to this square over here. You can attack move if you want or just run, but you'll be fine regardless. And then you can stand just one tile above it. You can't hit from right here. Theoretically, you could stand. I'm not going to attack him because I'm going to kill him. Uh, you could, but you don't have to. Protect from range. It's going to be a jad phase now. So, like I've said before, just switch back and forth. As soon as you see that one attack come out, switch to the next one. So, now switch to range. Now switch to mage. Now switch to range. Now switch to mage. Just so on and so forth. And that's all you do for the jet phase. Move down to this square. You want to be standing on this square because he will have poison that comes over here. You don't want to get hit by that. So now we're going to have a red phase in the middle. And again, you would just be attacking him. You're going to go ahead and soak up this poison here because you don't want to get hit by Zora there. You'd rather just take the poison damage there. 
then you don't even need that on anymore. And then he'll do a green face here. And this is the last of the face. So I'm going to go ahead and kill him off now. And that is the last of rotation one. We ended up getting rotation one that time around, I believe. Yeah, that was rotation one. All right, Zora, go ahead and drop me something. I've been a good boy this year. It's only like September, but I've been a good boy. Are you really going to troll me like that? You were dead. You were dead. You regenerated that. You're a cheater. Poggers. That's rotation one. All right, so like before every other kill, we will go Angler, Magic, Bastion, and Close Chat because it can't be asked. All right, let's hope we get a good rotation this time. Run over here to this square, put it on Mystic Might, and we'll hang out for a minute. No, I need to check something. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're good. All right, what do we get? Which rotation do we get? I'm ready to log out just in case. Okay, so potentially a rotation we need. So this can be either rotation one or two. So we'll run down here, run back up. You can also stay on this one for the first attack. It doesn't matter, you won't get hit regardless. Switch to your range, put on protect from magic, throw on eagle eye, make your way up to this square. You can attack while you move, but if you're a little unsure of yourself, don't do anything. Run over here, okay, awesome. Put on protect from range, put on mystic might, switch to your magic gear, attack from right here. You're going to stand right here for a little bit. The next phase that we're going to have is we're going to have a blue phase right here. And with the blowpipe, we're going to need to move up one square. So I'll go into that in a minute. Switch to your range gear. Drink your into venom. There you go. Put on protect from magic. Throw an eagle eye. And then you can walk back one square. You can actually attack from right here. We are going to die. Or fine. Okay, so he's going to shoot out two snakelings. After the second snakeling, walk back. Put on long range. And then you can attack from right here and be completely fine. Switch to your magic gear, throw on uh, Mystic Might. You can attack from right here. As you can see, I'm leaving on Protect from Magic because it does actually prevent these guys from hurting me. After the two attacks, make your way over to this safe spot here, put on Protect from Range, and continue to attack him. After this, we're going to get a blue phase. So as you do, switch everything. I'm gonna combo it really quick because I'm pretty low as it is. Um, make your way back to this square. There's no real rush, but just make your way back because he's going to shoot a bunch of venom and we want to be on this side of the pillar basically. And we need to be ready for a jet phase. So then we switch to our magic gear, put on protect from range and mystic might, and then do a jet face, so switch right as the ability comes out. So switch, 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 move down here, switch, 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 and that should be the end of it. And then we can just chill right here. Next is going to be a red phase right here. And like we do with rotation one, we're going to run into the poison clouds because it's better than being smacked and stunned by Zora. We're going to run back, and then after this, he'll come up. It'll be a green face, put on protect from range, and there you go. There is rotation two. All right, Zora. You gave me a magic seed once. You gave me a magic seed once, so that was pretty good tonight. But maybe we get like a surface on video. Or not. Okay, cool. That's rotation two. All we have left is rotation four now. So before every attempt, go ahead and eat your anglerfish and then drink your magic potion, your bastion potion, and head inside. Every phase starts off the same. Run over to this square over here. Throw in your mystic might and attack. And just chill here for the first phase. The second um, attack or the second phase is where we find out which rotation we're working with. Okay, so we're working with rotation three. So it's going to be a range phase to start off with, or a green phase. So we'll throw on protect from range and we'll just chill here. He's gonna shoot out three snakelings. On the third snakeling, we'll move over to this square. So one, two, move. And we'll run over here to this one. It's going to be a red phase now, so we can turn off protect from range. We'll get to this square and then we'll just chill here for a little bit. Mark this one so it's easy to visualize for you guys. Then when he goes to attack us, which is right now, we'll attack and we'll move down here. 
You can get two attacks off here, only do one if you feel comfortable, but you get the second attack off and then run back to the same square. Now he's going to do a blue phase, so we're going to switch to that, throw an eagle eye, and like I said, that's a habit. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, watch your health during this. You don't want to die during a blue phase. He has five attacks. Throw on your mage gear. It's green phase here. Make yourself make your way to this square right here. We'll just chill. We're going to chill here for actually two phases because after this, it's going to be a blue phase right here. So we can sit right here and just switch to our range gear right now. Throw on protect from mage. Put on eagle eye. Go to town. Go ahead and spec here. To, okay. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. It's just a blue range phase. Just hits me. Okay, so now run over to the uh, square adjacent to this. Or opposite of it. And we will just chill here. You can try and protect from missiles. You don't need to. He won't shoot any missiles at you. But you can do it just to form a good habit. After this, there will be another green phase right here. That we will need to have protect from missiles on for. Make your way over here. It's a blue face. I'm going to go ahead and eat. And I'm actually going to stop DPSing now because I don't want to kill him. Um, so we're going to chill here. After this, it's going to be a Jad phase, which is right here. So I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to eat up just to be safe and drink some prayer. I'm going to throw on my mage gear. He's going to start on mage. So stick with your mage prey. And then he'll go mage, range, mage. So a lot of people have trouble with the prayer flicking here. All you do, as soon as you see the move come out, you switch to the next one. So like, he goes to attack, switch. Goes to attack, switch. That's all you do. A lot of people usually end up switching too late, and that's how they die on this. And that's that rotation. So now I'm going to kill him off. Throw this on. And just beat him. And that's rotation three. Die. Thank you. What do we get? What do we... Are you going to troll me? You're going to troll me, aren't you? Thank you. What do we get? <laughs> Sweet. Don't. I don't even want these, but whatever. Okay. You would eat your angler, drink your magic, drink your bastion potion. Then you would go in to go see Zora. Run over to this corner. Put on Mystic Might. And chill here for the first phase. And for phase four, the, uh, the feature we are looking for is the second phase to be blue. That's what we're looking for. Oh my gosh, we got it. Okay, so switch to your range. This is a big moment. Don't screw this up now, Surgeon. Okay, so we switch to our range, put on Eagle Eye. It's going to shoot out four Snakelings, and then he will start uh, doing a, you know, a blue range phase, as you usually do. So we'll just chill here for a little bit. Once he goes down... It's going to be a green phase, so eat everything, put on protect from me or range, put on mystic might, put on your mage gear, and then make your way to this square right here. He's going to shoot out two sets of clouds. You're fine here. Switch back to your range set, put on protect from mage, put on eagle eye, and go to town. Use your specs to heal up, obviously. A lot of people don't like this phase because you there's a lot of blue in the very beginning, so it like drains your supplies usually if he just decides to hit you with range all the time like he's doing right now i'm still fine at the moment okay so now we're going to make our way over here to this square right here and it is a red face so we can just put on mystic might and just hang out right here for a little bit next is going to be a green phase right here so i'm going to just hang out right here put on protect from range and just kill him well i'm not actually going to kill him i'm going to make sure we get through all this oh please don't die Oh, awesome. I'm such a gamer. Okay, so now you have a, a um, green phase up here as well. And this one isn't really going to do anything. It's just going to be a lot of um, snakelings and stuff. So make sure you eat. Once that last poison cloud is cleared, though, make your way over to this square right here. Switch to your range gear. Once you're done, like once this phase is done, you'll switch to your range gear because we're going to have a blue phase coming up. So switch to your range gear. Put on protect from magic. Put on eagle eye. And you would attack him here. The next thing we're going to have is a uh, green phase right in the middle. So we can just kind of hang out here for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and drink a prayer potion because I need to. Once this phase is done, make your way back over to the square we were just standing at. Switch to protect from range. Hang out right here. Switch to 
Switch to your range gear, put on protect from mage. And then make your way down to the corner. You want to be down at the corner for this one because he will shoot out a bunch of poison clouds and you don't want to get hit by them. So make sure you're standing down here. Now we have a Jad phase that will start on magic. So magic, range, magic, range, so on and so forth. Just rinse and repeat. Okay, now we have a blue phase, so switch to everything, throw on like eagle eye and everything, throwing in all your range gear, and then this is the end of the rotation, so I'm gonna kill him now. Or not. What do we got? Okay, so now it gets fun. Now I have to predict everything, or react to everything, I guess. And you're dead, you're out of the game. Okay, what do we get, Zora? That is, that's a nice 160k drop. Let's take it. And that is rotation four. All right, so this is a little bit different than like what we were just doing with a bunch of the other uh, normal method. We won't be having like an angler to pre-pot, but we will have a magic potion to pre-pot. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll just hop in there. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys a run through, a quick run through of like basically what you're doing. Uh, the reason the mage only method works is because you basically hide from the blue phases. So you never really take damage from blue phases. You only attack during green and um, you only attack during green and red phases, which as you know, those phases are the only phases that you can like 100% prevent all the damage from. So that's why it's usually considered a, like a pretty newbie friendly method. The only way that it kind of stinks is like, if you get, if you get like the blue, if you get like the blue phase right there, you basically just run like over here. That's what you do. So if you get like rotation four, you just book it over to this side and you just stand like basically out of line of sight of Zora so he can't hit you. This is actually probably one of the better ones to get for mage only because there's a lot of dpsable is that if that's a word dpsable phases in the beginning you know, i'm just gonna book it over to this side right here i'm gonna put up protect from magic to try to prevent some of the damage but just book it over to this corner right here so he can't see me so I don't take any damage from this. I just kill it. Then we're going to have a range phase right here. So we're already in position. Irma says hi for anybody who's listening. Irma, everyone knows you say hi. Then we're gonna run over here to get out of line of sight of this. I'll just chill right here. Irma, they all they all they all say hi to you. You are ridiculous. So then we're already in position here. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to move down one square so that we don't get hit by the poison here. Actually, I think we're fine here too. Yeah, we're super fine here. So you can actually just chill there the entire time. Then we're going to get a green face here that we have to pray against. Yes, Irma, we all know you're there. Okay, run to right here so he can't see you. Then when he starts doing venom, you can actually pop out. You won't like, probably like in a million years, you like won't hit him, but you may as well like try it, I guess. Okay, then we're gonna get the Jad phase right here. Starts on magic because of the rotation we're on. Again, move back up. He actually doesn't attack during this phase. I'm a dumb dumb. I'm sorry. I lied. Now we're going to get a green phase right here. And Zora has basically reset now. So basically, in summary of how this method works, you basically just like avoid, you basically line of sight Zora anytime it's a blue face so you stand like in some position of the pillars to make sure that Zora can't see you and then that way you only take damage from faces that you can actually like protect and damage from and that's how the mage only method works it's very slow it's very slow but you will take minimal damage so it's easier for you to actually pull off a kill not recommended for like camping or like farming the boss at all but for getting your first kill for the diary definitely um definitely well worth it 
So I want to show you guys the safe spots for when you're doing the mage only. So if Zora spawns in the middle, you have two safe spots. You can either stand on this pillar, these two tire tiles on the northeastern side, and both of these will work. I'll show you the other one in a second. If Zora spawns to the south, it's a blue face to the south, you can run all the way to the tip of the corner where you see I'm at right now, and Zora can't reach you here. The other safe spot, if Zora is in the middle, is you just run to the opposite pillar and you do the same thing. You stand in the same position, just opposite the other pillar. And then if Zora is spawned to the south, you can also just run all the way north on this side as well. And Zora will also not be able to hit you. So again, the if Zora is blue on the north and south, both sides work just fine. You just have to know which one. If Zora is eastern blue you stand right here and you're fine and if it is western blue you just stand the opposite all the spots are mirrored so for tips and tricks if you weren't aware of this you can combo eat carom bonds with another piece of food like sharks or manta rays and that's why we bring like a couple of these is to quickly recover either 38 or 40 hp depending if you use sharks or manta rays as your main food source in terms of eating try to eat in between phases so when like zora goes down into the swamp that's when you want to eat because you can't deal damage anyway um, this is more so something to pay attention when you start getting the hang of the mechanics normally just eat just eat food just stay alive mainly um if you eat when Zora is down, though, you won't have like any as much incoming damage, so you won't have to worry about it as much. But just eat food when you're learning it. Try to just make sure you don't die. That's the main thing. You don't learn if you're you don't learn if you're dead. So stay alive. So earlier I mentioned something about a logout trick when you're trying to figure out which um, setups you want to use. So basically, the way it works is you start the phase off like normal. So you run over to the north or the north uh, eastern corner, the same square that you start off every phase. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the logout button. And then what you're going to do is right after this phase ends, you're going to see what the second phase of it is. And as soon as you see it, if it's not the one you want, spam that logout button and you'll log out right away. Similarly, you can also teleport out. This is just much faster. For those of you that are using Vengeance, always Prevenge. There's only one rotation when you can't proc it on Zora before Snakelings will pop it off of you. If you get rotation three, which is the one where you get a green phase on the second phase, let Zora proc it off of you since Snakelings will appear in that phase after five hits. So if you see that pop up, just like turn off prey range, let them pop it and then turn it back on. Um, we When we are reapplying the Vengeance though, we want to make sure we're doing it on a blue phase and you want to be doing it as close to the timing as a range hit hits you because we're trying to minimize the amount of time that Snakelings can pop it off of us. So if we do it like pretty close to the same tick that the range hit hits us while we're praying Mage, it's going to give us the highest chance of actually like getting a Vengeance off on Zora. Always be attacking while moving. It's a relatively simple concept and you want to be doing this once you get more comfortable with the mechanics of Zora. But once you kind of learn this, it'll help decrease your kill times in the long run if you're constantly attacking as you're running. The easiest like weapon to practice this with is with a two tick weapon because all you do is you either move or you attack with every tick. That's all you do. You move, attack, move, attack, move, attack. Or if you've ever played League, attack, move is basically what you're doing. So. Practice that, it'll help a lot. You'll maximize your DPS so you're not just running around and wasting a ton of ticks that way. Kind of a sweaty thing, but once you get used to it, it's very simple. So when do we Divine Ranging Potion? Um, when your range level hits 108, if you're level 99 range, this is when you want to use your Divine Ranging Potion because this is when you lose a max hit. After the five minute buff of the Ranging Pot, the Divine Ranging Pot is over. That's when you will repop the Bastion and then repeat this process all over again. I'm going to go into a discussion about dragon arrows because this popped up on one of my Road to Oblivion videos. Um, there's a common misconception that uh, dragon arrows don't affect anything because damage with the Tebow is capped at 50, which is true. The damage you cannot hit higher than a 50 at Zora. But it's important to know that the way the damage works is that if your damage roll was higher than a 50, it just gets reset to a 50 so the reason that we're using dragon arrows over like amethyst arrows or something like that is because dragon arrows give us more rolls that are above a 50 which turn into 50s which turns into higher dps so even though you can't hit higher than a 50 you can theoretically hit 
more 50s because you have a higher probability of doing it and that's why we use dragon arrows um also the comparison between like a tebow and a blowpipe the only time a blowpipe is better than a tebow on blueface is when you are using dragon darts if you're using dragon arrows with your tebow all the time then you like the only time the blowpipe is better is if you are using dragon darts other than that tebow is completely fine for there um another thing is the only reason like you see me having a blowpipe in some of these setups with a tebow is because you can use the blowpipe for the majority of the blue phase like if you have dragon darts you can use the blowpipe for the majority of the phase and then on the last attack before zora goes under you can swap to your twisted bow to get like one big hit with the same tick pattern as the blowpipe and the reason that happens is because of how like um attack cooldowns work in the game Attack cooldowns are based off of the last weapon you use. This is very, like, kind of technical, so if you're new, like, don't worry about this. You'll learn this someday. Um, but the way the attack cooldowns work is it goes off of the last weapon used. Um, so, like, in free-to-play PKing, for example, that's why, like, rune simming to rune two-hander was kind of a thing, because the way it works is that you were able to attack with a rune two-hander in a four-tick manner because the last weapon you use with the rune scimitar. The same thing applies here with the blowpipe versus the twisted bow. The twisted bow on rapid is a a five-tick weapon and the blowpipe is a two-tick weapon. If you're using your blowpipe, when you switch to your T-bow, the cooldown for you to attack again will be two ticks because that was the last weapon you used. So when you switch to the T-bow, you'll be able to attack in the same pattern. Therefore, you'll be able to get one last shot off with your T-bow for like a 50 usually, hopefully. On the correct phase so that's why you'll see that blowpipe in the setup you'll also see it there for like use of the special attack to help heal to make your trips last longer so use a blowpipe at your own risk it's not necessary at all i've done afk camping with tebow and it's been completely fine without it it's just something else to throw in there if you want to get like higher uh, higher dps stay longer whatever so now the reason that you kill the boss the loot um untradeables to mention you have a pet you have the um, Tanzanite and the Magma Mutagen. Tanzanite Mutagen is better. Fight me. I don't care. Whatever you say, Tanzanite Mutagen is just better. Um, other than that, you have just like your average Zora kill being around 150k, assuming you hit drop rates on everything, including uniques. So for someone who takes four minutes to kill, bank, reset, and get back to Zora, you're looking at around 2.2 mil per hour gross profit. Um, this does not account for supplies. This is just how much raw money you make. So I guess you could say it's like revenue. Um, the only like guaranteed drop from Zora is that it will drop X amount of scales. And one of the reasons that Zora is becoming a little bit more popular is that for whatever reason, Zora scales have like shot up in value. They were like 150 GP and now they're like up to like 200 or something right now. So they've gotten very high for what they used to be. Um, as you upgrade your gear though, and as you get better at mechanics, you can see the number of kills that you get per hour obviously increase or the time it takes to kill decrease. So let's say you decrease your average reset time to three minutes. Now it's three mil an hour. The better you get, the better gear you get, the more money per hour you will make. That's just how bossing goes. So in summation, Zora is similar to Vorkath in terms of GP per hour. Vorkath is generally considered simpler and slightly better GP per hour, but Zora does have its pros as well. Well, it used to, the main pro used to be the mutagen, but we all know how that went. Yeah. Um, the pet is still sought after though, and there are some nice GP to accompany that grind. Most people get turned off from Zora because they compare it to Vorkath and see that it's much more difficult in comparison just due to learning different mechanics and learning different rotations. But throw some time at it and maybe who knows like maybe you'll come to enjoy it and then if you do you add another boss to the list of things you can camp to make money in the game thank you guys very much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful shout outs to my discord that helped me decide to make this video for I voting in a poll um, to my mods and dozer that helped me review this script to make sure that i really didn't miss anything important in the introduction and the gear discord for having screenshots of gear that i can use my name is surgeon Y'all have a great day and happy scaping.